Hey, welcome back you guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of building a curb. Now this isn't just any old curb. This curb is specifically for skateboarding. So I did a few things to make it a little bit stronger, a little more specific, and they are modeled after these popular curbs in Santa Monica, California. So let's get right into it and I'll show you guys how I built them. The first thing I did was I built a little wooden mock-up just to see if I had the proportions right because I wanted to make sure that I could do some of these little popover tricks. In the end, I don't think I actually got it quite right and I made the dimensions a little bit too wide. But here they are. So it's about 7.25 inches at the bottom, six inches at the top, with a 10 degree slope on the edge. I think 10 degrees is okay, but you actually need to make the radius a little bit more than I did. I chose 3 8 because I thought I wanted to have kind of a sharp edge. And I also didn't know that your average curb actually has about a two inch radius, which is really round. So if you chose a three quarter inch radius, you'd be able to get a really good lock in on your grinds. However, if you're building this curb for aesthetics, like on the construction channel, you might want to go with something more like a one inch to two inch radius. And when it comes to radiuses and curb profiles, there is a ton of options. So you should really choose one and let that actually dictate the shape of your form. I knew I wanted my curb five and a half inches tall, so I marked it right there. And then I knew I also wanted a 10 degree slope on my curb, so I took my speed square and gave it a 10 degree angle. Next, chalk a line, set your saw to 10 degrees, and cut it as straight as humanly possible. And this angled cut is what will sit on the ground and determine the slope of your curb. Next, I cut everything to length. I believe I joined two pieces to make a 16 foot long curb. So probably a 10 foot and a six foot. And it looks like I actually put the sloped part of the cut up and I took the off cut and nailed it to the angled side of the off cut to form the slope of the curb. I used nails for this because it's a lot easier to pull nails when the form works all done and you want to reuse the lumber for something else. If you use screws, you wind up with a bunch of concrete in the screw heads and it's really hard to pull apart. Even if you can't actually pull the nail, you can easily pry them apart, but screws, because of their withdrawal strength, do not pull apart very easily, so I use them pretty sparingly. Because I had no form release agent, I used a combination of just some compressor oil that I had kicking around and paint thinner. It seemed to work pretty well. I scoured the internet for suggestions and more or less seemed like use some oil. And if you're not worried about the concrete getting stained, then you actually have quite a lot of options. The paint thinner was just to thin it down a little bit and make it penetrate the wood easier. And if you're wondering why we do this, well, it's called form release agent. So it's basically to help the forms come off the concrete easier without pulling any chips off. To fasten the form work, we use three and a quarter duplex nails. So that's the double headed nails you see there, plus tie wire. I'm cutting myself a whole bunch of little strips and I'm gonna be fastening this form about every four feet. We use a 3 16 bit on a hammer drill that seems to work perfectly for the duplex and tie wire trick. So get both ends fastened and then what you're going to want to do is take a look down your board. And in this case it needed to go in a bit so you can see me tapping it in before screwing it and then I'll probably put one nail in between each of those locations. So it's about five nails in total for 16 feet. And now is your chance to set the desired width. So I mentioned that I made the top of this about six inches wide, which in my case for a skateboard curb was a bit too wide. I think you should do five and a half if you're doing a skate curb, but if it's architectural, make it whatever width you want it to be. So these caps at the end will not be subject to a lot of stress, so just screwing them on with screws is good enough. As usual, I take every opportunity to sight down my work, see if it's straight, and then I'll even double check the measurement to see if the measurement's looking right too. 
and according to my eye it must have needed to be straightened just a little bit right there. And once you have the forms fastened, it is time for rebar. And I know some of you might be thinking, Ben, are you sure a curb needs rebar? Well, to answer that question, I thought I would take you to a local high school down the street from me where they clearly did not think that the curbs needed rebar. They've been making repairs and the repairs fail. You just cannot count on these curbs to stay together for the kids. <laughs> People cannot seem to stop driving into them. Oh, it's comically bad, actually. So yes, curbs do, in fact, need rebar. So I used two rows of 10M rebar. And I overlapped them by about a foot. And then I cut all these little cross sections that I put across to hold them the right distance apart. After placing it in the form, I propped the rebar up with little blocks about two inches off the ground and made sure that the rebar wasn't touching the edges of the form anywhere because you wouldn't want the rebar showing on the outside of the concrete and rusting over time. Next, I screwed these little spacers on the outside of the form and then screwed a little stick across the top just to stop it from spreading apart when the concrete's in there getting vibrated with a hammer. There's definitely better, stronger ways to do this, but this is just how I did it on this project. I decided to mix my own concrete for this job. So I got a pile of the same kind of sand and rocks you would use for exposed aggregate. It has smaller, rounder pebbles that I thought might make for a really nice grinding curb. In order to increase the strength of the curb, I decided to add 50% more cement. Typically for every five scoops of Navi Jack, you do one scoop of cement. So we decided to do one and a half scoops of cement for every five scoops of Navi. And shamefully, I have at least a couple minutes of us doing the dry mix, and I must have not known that I had my camera on. And when I went to turn it on to film the mixing of the cement, I probably actually turned the camera off. So really, we're just gonna go from dry mix to wet. Sorry guys, I wish I filmed that. So the reason we tap the forms is to consolidate the concrete. What it does is it helps it all settle down and gets rid of the air bubbles that are in the mix. So it's a lot of tapping. If you don't have an actual concrete vibrator, that's what you do. You just hit the forms and slowly but surely that concrete will settle in and you'll probably get rid of most of the air bubbles. I think this took about three mixes of concrete to fill this whole curb and it was probably over the course of about 45 minutes to an hour. So next it's time to screed it, which I probably should have been doing the whole time because you could see the concrete around the edges where it's touching the wood. A lot of moisture has been pulled out of it, so it's dragging in those spots. Not super well consolidated. I also probably should have been screeding it with something more like a mag float or even a block of wood, but you know what? I was just working with what I have. I'm not actually a concrete guy. do a lot of drywall work, as you guys know. So I was just using an old drywall trowel that I had kicking around. And you know, by the end of it, I did manage to get it screeded off well enough. And next we have probably the most satisfying part of the whole job, the edging. So again, I really should have been using something different than this 3 8 edger. It made a nice crisp corner. 
definitely not good enough for skateboarding and the main reason is that such a sharp corner chips too easily and also your wheels are going to roll over into a nice slappy way easier if you put a three quarter inch radius on that edge so somehow it didn't dawn on me that you would need to make those little brackets tall enough for the edger to get under but i still did okay working under the conditions i gave myself now the main purpose of the edger is to move all of the large rocks out of the way and create that radius that you're looking for. Not being super experienced in concrete, it was hard for me to know exactly the right moment to do that. Because the concrete needs to be supple enough to still be able to push the rocks somewhere. The rocks aren't going to go anywhere if this concrete's not soft, but I have heard that it needs to be fairly kicked off before you start doing the edging too. Now in the case of this curb, my plan was always to do an early remove of the forms and then slick the concrete up right after it had started to firm up. So right here, you can see all the water is rising to the top. It's still too early to pull off the forms. We're going to wait for all that water to soak into the concrete. And once it reached that point, it was time to remove the forms. And I'm about to make a total rookie mistake here. So watch as I pull the form off, I pull it directly towards me. What you want to do is slide the form up. Hindsight being 2020, I also know that I pulled the forms off too early. You can see how much the concrete is able to move. It shouldn't be able to move like that. And the idea is not to be able to polish it like with a steel trowel. This is the point that you actually want to get a magnesium float and you have to be able to push really hard to bring some of the fat up to be able to fill all those holes. So I definitely pulled the forms off too early in this case to do an early pull and slick. I don't know what it's actually called. That sounds kind of bad. <laughs> So after pulling the nails, it's time to pull the length of the form. And the tricky part here was that one end was fully firmed up because it was mixed about 45 minutes before the last mix. And I'm about to make the exact same mistake again where I'm pulling outward. I really think I should have gotten a bar underneath it and tried to slide it up instead of pulling it out because that suction created some bulges in the concrete. So it might seem crazy, but what you really want to do is not be pulling away here like this. Because down at the very end is where I got the biggest bulge. What you really want to do is slide those forms up. Yes! Okay, there's one done. So it's at this point here that my drywall skills really become a hindrance when it comes to doing concrete. I just kind of didn't fully understand how concrete works. After building this, I got to see a real crew doing curbs. And instead of messing around with the little metal trowel like this, the first thing they do is they use a mag float and they rub it really hard to pull out as much fat up to the surface. So it's the same thing as polishing quickset in a way but it's also totally different. Yeah, after watching this footage again, it's really clear to me that the concrete was just too wet, wasn't firm enough, and I wasn't pushing hard enough with the right tool. So I spent a lot of energy not getting the result that I was really looking for. In spite of that, I still got a pretty solid product in the end. It just took me a lot longer than it probably needed to. <laughs> You can really see the concrete move in this clip down at the far end. It was just too soft to be working with and that ultimately is where the bulge ended up being. Form just shouldn't have come off so early.
So at this point, the concrete is now fully firmed up and once every 40 minutes or so, I would go out, check on it and start bringing up the fat again, troweling it, trying to make it a little bit smoother, a little bit less bubbles and continually kind of compressing and working that edge. Definitely overworking it, but I will say that the curb ended up really strong because of it. I think I just managed to compress it all really hard. It hasn't been chipping much at all. And here's a not very well filmed clip of where it was when I decided to leave it. It was getting really dark out, so the camera was struggling to pick up the details. It's much later than it actually looks like it is in the footage. You guys, it's done. It's as good as I can possibly get it with the skill set I have. Would I like it better? Yeah. Am I happy with it? Yeah. So, hey. No problem. Now just hold your horses a minute because it is not ready to skate. The next thing you need to do is cure the concrete. I need it to be as strong as possible so we are going to give it a 30 day water cure. The burlap is going to help hold the moisture in and I literally did this for 30 days. I would water it every single day and put that plywood back on top so it would stay wet because concrete does not reach its maximum strength without remaining wet for 30 days. Now for architectural concrete, this level of water curing is totally unnecessary. All you're really gonna need to do is just keep it wet for about a week if you can. And it doesn't even need to be this wet, but just spray some water on it a couple times a day if you can. Here we are, 30 days of patience, of watering and what do we have? So we can see if we look close that the burlap did actually kind of stick to the concrete just a little bit. Needed a little bit of light sanding to get some of that texture off. So I left it for about a day to dry out before lacquering it. And when coating a curb, I really do think real lacquer is the best thing. And it's kind of a gnarly product, so I like to wear a respirator when doing it. And now I'm putting a coat of lacquer over the entire curb. A nice thick coat too. I only put one, one was enough, but I made sure to brush it on and apply it really thick. And the beautiful thing about a real lacquer, an old school lacquer, is that it dries out within about an hour. I'm pretty sure this is the same afternoon. For the uninitiated, I am putting wax on the curb. That's what we do. That's why us skateboarders turn everything black over time. All the paint from our skateboards and all the multiple layers of wax. So that's how I chose to build this curb, you guys. And yeah, there's some things that I would do differently if I was going to do it again, but overall it's really strong, it's a lot of fun, and it's serving its intended purpose very well. So I hope you guys found this video useful. 
Now, if you are a follower of the skateboard channel, be sure to watch the video I upload about building this curb. It's going to be the same for the first half of the video, but the second half, I'm gonna really get into detail about, you know, like changing the dimensions, the angles, everything that would make a really good slappy curb. Like how this could be even better will show a really good session skating it and yeah, just have a lot more fun at the end of the video. But for this one, I think we have covered enough to meet the needs of the construction channel. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing really well and that's it. Thanks for watching, till the next one.